Welcome everybody, Steve here. Well in this video I'm going to uh, show you what I do to prep you know existing walls for uh, paint. I have not done a video like that before and I've always got uh, people ask me you know what do I how do I prep a wall? Well I'm going to show you what I do. Everybody probably has their own little method to do uh, or how to do it but I think everyone is in agreement the first thing you got to do is clean it. Um, especially in uh, bathrooms and kitchens you know there's a lot of stuff that can get on the wall and if you paint over it that stuff's going to come through your paint ruin your paint job. And in a bathroom where there's a lot of moisture if you don't get good adhesion on your paint it's going to bubble. Like I've got these little tiny bubbles popping up here and there and that's just because of poor adhesion. So first step we're going to clean the walls and before you get going too far uh, you should determine what kind of paint it is. This is an older home here so you're never too sure what they're going to paint the walls with and whether it's a uh, oil base or uh, water base and just to test it put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a, on a cloth and if the paint starts coming off then you know that it's a water base and if it's enamel then you're going to have to prime it with a special primer so that you get good adhesion before you put on your top coat. So we're going to do this, get this all cleaned up and then the next step is going to be uh, sanding the walls. I guess I, uh, I don't think I mentioned, I'm using a degreaser here and I find that works really really well full strength. You just want something that's really going to cut all that muck and guck. So don't use anything too mild like you know I, I guess soap and water would probably work but it might, might leave a bit of a residue. But we're going to sand this anyway. It's looking good. I think I'm ready for the sander. Here's a quick tip for you. Now this piece of drywall right here, I'm going to remove it, but I want to put it back into its place instead of putting a new piece up. So the best way to do that is to find all the screws, unscrew it and it's just going to come off without breaking it or, or wrecking it at all. And I'm just going to show you what I do to figure that out. I've got a little earth magnet and I'm not taking this out but I'll find one here for you and I know where the stud is. And I'm just going to go up with my uh, magnet and that's where the nail is, or the screw, screw or nail. I hope it's a screw because then it's a little easier to, to, uh, to get out. And there you go. Right there. So now I know exactly where the screw is, I take it out, away I go. Now that's an easy fill. You never put your screw back in the same place that it came out. You just put the screw up maybe a couple inches up above it or below it. It doesn't really matter. So there we go. Tip of the day. Trying to get sanding, first thing I want to do is on the walls I scrape off any silicone that might be on there. You need a real nice sharp scraper for that. Now the reason I sand is for one thing you want adhesion. If it ain't sanded it ain't sticking. So sand it you're going to get a way better job. But what I like about it the most is it reveals all the little things that you have to repair. If you want your walls to look absolutely straight and beautiful then you need to sand it. For a typical room like this I might spend 20 minutes sanding it. That's not a big deal at all. And I'm going to actually use a palm sander. Like you could probably use a pole sander but 
Palm Sander just does, uh, does it much quicker and a lot nicer. I use an 80 grit and it does not take long. You just have to make sure that you scuff it good. And if there's a little spot, you know, if you've got an exposed nail head, you could sand that down and then just kind of refill that a little bit later. But I'll show you what I do. Not going to be able to film too much of this. The dust is going to be pretty bad. Because so I'll be closing the door and then uh, you won't be able to see me. See how it exposes this uh, spot right here. Not too sure what had happened in the past, whether they put another piece of drywall in there or something, but it's a pretty poor seam and it shows up really well after you've sanded it. This might be a little out of focus, but that was a little bit of a high spot. Sander takes it right down. That'll be feathered out. Let's give that a shot and see what happens. Right there. Well, that wasn't anything, that was just a cootie. take care of that hole right there and as you can see I moved uh, some plumbing move that pipe from there to over here so I'm just going to show you what I do to uh, fill a hole this one here is a little oblong sorry about the pipes Let's see if I can just get you over here that's better all right kind of in my way but that'll be all right so what I do is I cut a patch first and I put an arrow so I know which way is up and then all you do is just trace it out now you can cut this out with a knife if you want you can use a uh, drywall saw I prefer just an oscillating saw this is my favorite tool. Now, make sure that you uh, check. I've already checked the pipes are back. I should be uh, safe. Always put your hand in behind in case there's an electrical wire or something like that before you do any cutting. tuning on that that's almost perfect but if I if it's a little tight and you push it chances are you're gonna break your drywall so let me get my file here I'm gonna get my weight my weight I just use a drywall file just give her a one two
That fits a lot better. Got a little spot right here that needs to get cleaned up. Okay, that's gonna be perfect. Now we just gotta get a little piece of wood in behind there. So we got something to screw to. I always like to pre-start my screws here. And I'm just using a piece of half inch plywood, put a, put a screw in the middle so you can uh, hold on to it. You don't have to go the whole width, this is just a small little piece of drywall. Done deal. This is an exploratory hole because I uh, was uh, checking out the uh, plumbing. And all you do is just, I use my oscillating saw, cut it out, and use the same piece going back in. It's really easy and it's a real simple fix to mud that up. But you'll see that coming up soon. If you have a fairly decent void, you want to use a concrete fill to uh, pre-fill. We're going to use a fiberglass mesh around the small uh, patches. And since it's been sanded, we just want to give it a light little wipe with a damp rag to get any of the dust off so that it sticks better. Playing the mesh down is pretty straightforward. I just don't overlap it because it'll be just a bit more of a build up and that will uh, require more mud. Pretty tight in here, I can't get a great, great shot. But on the longer joints, I always use tape. I'm just a big fan of, uh, of using the uh, paper. I find that it just works a little nicer. And if there's just a tip, I don't want to go into too much detail when I'm uh, we're doing this. So this is just kind of, this is a little bit more than what you would do to be prepping the walls unless you're you know, cut a big hole into them, but I'll just, just go over it real quick anyway. Secret to running your tape on is make sure your uh, mud's a little thin. I'll be back. And we just have to run our tape down. Got a light one first. Now, the nice thing about this is I find if you use a mesh on a larger spot, if, it, if there's some shifting um, that goes on, it can leave a little tiny fine crack there. So that's why I like to use the paper. It's a little harder to put on, of course, but... You just flatten her out. Got a little bit of a dip here because of the uh, drywall. Pretty minor. We want to keep this, uh, just keep it thin. 
You don't want to build up anything with the uh, joint compound. Don't leave any little cooties because you'll have to scrape them off later. Just getting all the little patches done here. Got the mesh on these ones down here as well. And I'm just using a joint compound here. When you're doing a homeowner's, typically you're just going to use an all purpose. Uh, joint compound has a little bit more glue in it and it's going to shrink a little bit more. Just press it in there, make sure that you got your cracks are filled really well. And then all you do is just go over it, smooth it all out. Remember, don't save the world. Can't do this all in one shot. Let it set up, then come over, go over top with the uh, all-purpose, and then we'll slowly build our way around, and you'll never see it again. So our joint compound has set up. If you got any little cooties, just Drag your knife along, and now we're ready for some finish coat. And I'm using a uh, just a uh, basic all-purpose, and I like it. Some of the finishing mud that you can use, I find that it's um, it's really easy to sand. But you know, if you ever drag your fingernail across it, then it gouges quite easy. So I, I've always liked the uh, the all-purpose. Now. This is one of the reasons I want to do this video is you're going to run into some issues when you're dealing with uh, painted walls. If you do that, you can see that all of a sudden there's just nothing but little bubbles everywhere. And you know, I try and teach this to, uh, to friends and all that stuff. Those can only be fixed after you get uh, a, a coat of primer on really really difficult to fill these because once you sand them of course now you got little pinholes so the way to get to avoid that you're not going to get them all you're going to have to repair the odd pinhole just wherever your uh, repair is going to be put a really 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 thin coat on really push it in Now once that little thin coat is on there, then your uh, little bubbles kind of disappear. Now remember, just put on what your uh, patch will take. This is a fun job so you don't want it to ever end. Looks good. Got something in there, but I'm just gonna leave that. I can just scrape that for the next time. All right, let's move on to the next guy here. Now when you have paper, it doesn't seem to do that. I'm not a scientist, so I'm not really too sure what happens with those little bubbles. I think it's probably just a, an adhesion issue. I'm sure somebody out there knows. So I'm going about, I don't know, 
maybe four inches past the initial uh, taping joint. Any more than that, you have to get really, really lucky and know what you're doing to really build that up. So just lay it on. Doesn't matter how it goes on. It's how it comes off that counts. there. Give her a little shot. Really light on your last one. Remember, you don't have to do it all perfect on the on this. You're going to be putting on a couple coats. So. Probably three coats when you're when you're doing a butt joint. You got to go quite a ways past. seem to have quite a few in my bathroom I'm not sure what's going on there this one here I'm gonna leave that's for the uh, towel rack just put a little bit of I'm using a bigger knife that's okay put her on but go both ways okay and then we want to make sure it's all feathered out leave it real thin last thing you want to do is do this okay because you do that, now you got to have to sand everything. You got to sand anyway, but you just have more sanding. We don't want to do that. Now this is a really good example of using your sander. Now I've used my sander and you can see where at one point in time somebody went and scraped a whole bunch of paint off this wall and did a really poor job of finishing it. But you, 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 I couldn't see it. Of course, the light is shining the right way. It's going up this way, or uh, can't really see with my finger. It's going this way. So you don't really see that. But when you put a sander to it, it's pretty obvious. Now I could spend a little bit more time with the sander and trying to feather that out. Now you're still gonna have to put a little bit of mud on there to make it perfect. So we'll just give her a couple really, really thin coats that'll disappear forever. I know that light's a little bit bright, but I just put a little bit of mud on that. Get it real thin, get it. bubbles out. film. I got to remember this is going to dry up fairly uh, quick so you know in an hour you could probably come back and put another coat on there because it's so thin. So when you're prepping your walls it happens pretty fast. Now if you got a pretty good uh, hole you're gonna have to leave that overnight for sure but this will dry quickly because we're so thin. Okay, so now I'm going to finish up the rest of this. And you know, even though this is getting tiled, you still want to do a nice job. And um, the nicer, the, the flatter it is, the flatter your tile job is going to be. And it's going to be way, way easier to do. We're not going to put four coats on here. We're still going to make it look nice and true, but you still want to do a decent job. 
And the same within your corners, because you're going to have to finish your corner there. So if you finish it here, then you're going to have a bump there. And then that's, you're just going to have to deal with that when you're uh, tiling. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's just tile. You can, you can do that. I have done nightmare jobs where the walls haven't been straight. And all you do is fight. And you come home and you have a terrible day. But we're in control, so we're going to make it right. Now... This one here, um, I'm just going to uh, do this kind of quick. I'm not going to get into too many details. If you really want to know how you know you do all these um, you know butt joints and corner joints and all that kind of stuff, I did a, a bit more of an in-depth video on the bedroom, the basement bedroom. So I'm not going to waste your time. This is about kind of prepping walls, getting them ready for paint. So I'm going to continue on. I'm having fun. This is my favorite job. So, okay. Here's one thing that a lot of people overlook: baseboard. If somebody has caulked it, you take that caulking off. A lot of time, the paint will peel. And that is one thing you're going to have to do, depending on, you know, the size. Sometimes you can get away if you're going to put a bigger baseboard on. But it's always worth putting a little extra on there. It's a bit of a pain because you've got to bend over. But pay off in the end. So right here, this is uh, what I was hoping when I when I did my uh, my uh, mudding in the bedroom. I was hoping a little bubble would show up. Now you can't really see it. I just pushed it in with my fingernail, but it's a spot where the paper did not adhere to the wall, and it doesn't matter what you do, that will never ever go away. So just make a little slit like that. You can see that it, the paper peels up. All right, I'll be right back. You just throw a little mud on there. And continue on. This was just a bad joint here. I'm just, uh, this is not a big deal. But it does show up over here. Just keeping the mud thin. Remember you always go, go past where you uh, mudded last. That is probably done. And I'll show you what I do to sand it when it's uh, when we get there. So I threw a little mud on there, and it's a little thick, and you can see how it bubbles up. Let's make her real thin. The bubbles disappear. Now when you're doing a renovation and you're just, you know, you want your walls to look good, typically you'll see the old joint if they've done a poor job. Like this one here isn't too bad, but I've seen some really bad ones where you've had to mud them up, you know, fairly significant in order to get rid of them. This one here has just got a real slight one. You know, we're, we're mudding the walls, we're gonna be priming the whole thing, so, you know, it's just a matter of just a thin skiff. You're still going to have to do two coats, but you can see how the low spot right there. So I'm just going to all the way across here. Get right. these uh, nail holes.
Yeah, you can see the low spot right there. Now, in the bathroom, does that matter? Well, it's good practice because in the real world, when you get out where there's a lot of sunshine, you're gonna see that all day long. Okay, we're just finishing up the mudding. And this is where that bad seam was. So we'll put our real thin coat on first. Make sure we don't get any air bubbles. Let's continue this on just a little bit further here. Hit this at the same time. Well, it seems like it takes a little bit of time, you know, to put that thin coat on. And then every time you want to make a nice stroke, you always get a cootie. I just pick them off and stick them on the one corner of my, my pellet here. So let's just get some mud on. And then you just smooth it all up. you keep your knife a little bit lower, just don't drag your fingers, you'll get a little nicer, uh, nicer finish. If you, go, if you go too steep, then it's going to take too much mud off. See, that's, that's perfect. Now you can see there that, you know, it didn't look like there was much going on there, but when you get your mud on there, you can see that it's filled quite a bit. That is done. So now we can just let that dry, give it a little bit of a sand, and uh, we're ready. And we've eliminated any of the little pinholes. We're finally done, buddy. So I got two coats. Anywhere where there's a joint, I got uh, three coats, and it looks awesome. I haven't, uh, you know, got a bunch of excess on here, so the sanding is going to be minimal. I know that's everyone's favorite job, but you gotta do it. Now, what I normally do is if you take a, these little sponge blocks are, they're just the greatest thing that has come out, but you know, they're limited. Like if, if I was to sand a larger area with just this block, that area is gonna be a little bit crooked. So what I like to do, I'll just take my, I've got a round, um, sander, you can put this on a, uh, a paint stick, and I've got some 100 grit on here. And what I'll do is I'll just lightly go over everything, and I'll straighten everything up. And then once it's straight, then I can take the fine spot on the sponge, just Clean up the edges a little bit. And then just lightly go over everything just to get rid of the 100, or the 100 uh, grit scratches. And that is done. You get a little bit of an edge here. You want to make sure that your uh, edges are all nice and feathered out. Because that's where you're gonna, that's where your eyes are gonna catch if you paint that and you see a little ridge. But other than that, that is perfect. And that was that joint that we could barely see. And just by putting two coats on there, you can see how much uh, the wall took, you know, with the uh, with the finish mud. And now when I paint that, it's gonna look perfect. All right.
Let's look at these little guys. Sponge works good on these ones, of course, because they're small. So you got a coarse and you got a fine. And everyone thinks that you just got to sand with a fine all the time. You know, you, you can if it's really, really thin. But, you know, you still got a little bit of build up on here. So just give her a, just a real light one with some uh, with the coarse side, just to straighten it all out. And then go around and finish it with the fine. That's it. Everything's feathered out around the edge. And you should, like if there's a little mark here, this is what we filled, you should be able to just start to see it again. Now, one of the mistakes that you can do is just go a little bit too far, and then you reveal your, uh, your mark again, and then you're gonna have to go back over with a little bit of uh, mud. So I'm gonna keep on uh, sanding. It, uh, it doesn't take me very long to get this all done. So, you can watch a little bit. If you're having trouble, uh, see? yourself a trouble line. Just shine it on the edge like this and you can see everything. And then when you see everything's nice and flat and smooth, stop. Move on. This is that spot on the uh, on the upper part of the uh, wall there that was painted peeled prior to the last paint job. But the mud has filled it in really, really nice. You'll never ever see that again. Mudding's all done. Sanding's all done. I'm really happy with it. And that's a pretty big stage because as soon as I f I feel that I'm at uh, past that stage, I feel like the job's done because it's just lipstick after that, just making it look good. But it turned out great, but some of the things, you know, like if you notice you got a scratch or something like that, don't try and fix it right now. Prime it first, and then you can uh, go over it with a little bit of mud, especially on the pinholes. Pinholes are pretty well impossible to fix, you know, at this stage. Prime it, a little bit of mud over the pinholes, your light sand, paint, and you're done. So, Next step, let's get some primer on this. And I just got started here, did a little bit of cutting in, and now it's time to do some rolling. So thanks for watching, stay tuned.